When we're talking about kinetics, we talk about how fast a reaction goes. And there are many different factors which affect the rate of the reaction. Temperature, concentration. But then we have to go a little deeper into kinetics and tell students that reactions don't usually happen all in one step. We've kind of been lying to you all this time. Uh, usually, chemical reactions take several different intermediate steps until they finally get to the end result. And when we talk about how fast a reaction goes, we need to talk about the speed of the individual steps. One step becomes more important than the other, and we call that the rate limiting step. I used to talk about uh, track, especially during track season when you have a relay race, or swim season when you have a relay race then the relay team can only go as fast as the slowest person until the students reminded me that if you have a really fast person at the end, you can make up for the slow person in the middle. All of a sudden, the kinetics analogy fell apart because it doesn't work in kinetics. This is one way I can show students how a rate limiting step works. It's um, take a series of funnels. Funnels I've got on a ring stand. I just happen to have four funnels here. You can have as many or as few. Well, you have to have at least three. Four is a good number. And what's different about the funnels is the diameter of the bottom of them. The diameters are all different sizes. So no matter how big the top is, how much going into the reaction, we can only get as much out as the bottom. And since we have different diameters, we're going to have different rates for each elementary step. This would be a four-step mechanism. We have step one, two, three, and then our final step four. So it's pretty easy to show students without a lot of fuss, and I like to use sand for this, that as I pour into step one, it's just going straight through because step one is a really fast step. It has a very large opening on the bottom. But step two starts to fill up a little bit and we can see very quickly that it's step three that's slowing us down. And no matter how fast I pour into step one, I can't go any faster than step three will allow. And unlike a relay race, step four can't make up for that because we're not even to the capacity of step four. Step four can't do anything until step three has emptied its sand. So this is a quick way to show the rate limiting step, on a step in a mechanism. Um, one, a couple alternatives you can do, you can use water. I find water goes a little too quickly. I like the sand, it slows it down a little bit. You can illustrate uh, differences in temperature um, by using water as your one temperature. And then something a little more viscous, corn syrup is a recommended thing, as a uh, lower temperature. Now I realize they're not at two different temperatures, but you're just trying to get a little analogy there. We can change our rate limiting step. We can make our rate limiting step the first one, and no matter how fast the rest of my runners are, it's not going to make up for the fact that our first step, whoops, I forgot my triangle there. There we go. It's just not going to make up for our rate limiting step. So I can pour into here, and I see that I've got plenty of opportunity to speed that reaction up for steps two, three, and four, but step one just won't allow it. It's limiting how fast my reaction goes. It's simple. It's quick. Um, I said I like the sand better than the water because it's, just, it's a little slower than the water. It's a little more visible. I do like this black sand because it's very visible. and. It's a quick way to show rate limiting steps in a chemical reaction.